5.3 gigahertz, 1.35 volts, 15 to 30% performance increase. Hello, Scatterventures, and welcome to a brand new episode. I know, right? Two videos in less than two weeks? I don't think we've ever done that before. Anyway, in this episode, we'll be having a look at the Intel Core i7 10700K together with the EK Quantum MPG Z490 Carbon EKX motherboard. The Core i7-10700K is the little brother of the Core i9-10900K, which we've overclocked in the previous episode. Unlike the i9, the Core i7-10700K only has 8 cores and 16 threads. However, the base frequency is increased by 100MHz to 3.8GHz, and then again, the turbo frequencies are 100MHz lower to 4.8GHz for all cores. Also, the Core i7 does not have the thermal velocity boost feature that the i9 has. The Core i7 should be available in stores right now for a little bit less than $400. The EK Quantum MPG Z490 Carbon EKX motherboard is a collaboration between EK and MSI to bring water cooling motherboards to a much more affordable price point. The bundle consists of an EK Quantum Momentum monoblock and the MSI MPG Z490 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. At about $399 US dollar, the Carbon EKX matches the price point of the MSI MEG Z490 ACE. In this video, we'll be covering the basic steps needed to get your Core i7-10700K all the way up to 5.3 GHz. We'll dig into three overclocking strategies. First, we'll use MSI Gain Boost function. Two, we will build on top of the gain boost function and increase further using turbo ratio offset function. Lastly, we'll be doing some manual overclocking as well. As said, along with the Intel Core i7-10700K processor, in this guide we will be using the EK Quantum MPG Z490 Carbon EKX DRGB motherboard, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-4266 memory sticks, and of course EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. Last but not least, we also threw in an RTX 2080 Ti for good measure. The cost of the components should be about $2,900. That's $380 for the CPU, $400 for the additional cooling, $400 for the motherboard, $200 for the bench table, $200 for the memory, and then $1,300 for the graphics card. For benchmarking purposes, we'll be using the following tools. SuperPi 4M, Geekbench 5 single and multi-threaded, HWBot X265 4K preset, Cinebench R20, Ycruncher Pi 1 million digits, and Final Fantasy 14. Before we get started with pushing the performance of the Intel Core i7-10700K processor, let's first take a look at the scoring at default settings. In SuperPi 4M, 37.608 seconds. Geekbench 5 single, 1361 points. Geekbench 5 multi threaded, 8141 points. HWBot X264 4K, 15.422 frames per second. Cinebench R20, 4875 marks. White Cruncher Pi 1M, 66.536 seconds. Final Fantasy 14, 88.51 frames per second. Checking the temperatures using Prime95 with AVX enabled, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 74 degrees centigrade and peak VRM temperature of 57.5 degrees centigrade, with an average CPU package power of 207 watts. The first step is definitely the most easiest. Enable MSI Game Boost. MSI Game Boost enables one second overclocking, giving you an easy performance boost in no time. Game Boost does two things. First, it overclocks the CPU by exactly one turbo ratio, so plus 100 megahertz. Second, it also enables XMP memory. To enable Game Boost, simply click on the two buttons near the top left in your BIOS. Once they light up, you've enabled Game Boost. Simply save the settings and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. Across most of the multi-threaded benchmarks, we see the largest gains. Again, checking the temperatures using Prime95 with AVX, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 94 degrees centigrade and peak VRM temperature of 74.5 degrees centigrade with an average CPU package power of 272 watts. Now, let's move on to the manual work. 
Building on what we learned from the MSI Game Boost, we take our first manual overclocking steps. In the BIOS, navigate to Advanced Mode and then enter the OC menu. Under CPU Ratio Apply Mode, select Turbo Ratio Offset. Change the Turbo Ratio Offset to value plus 2. Adjust the CPU Ratio Offset when running AVX to 0. Set the Ring Ratio to 45. Enable the Extreme Memory Profile. In the Digital Power submenu, adjust the CPU Load Line Calibration Control to Mode 4. Then finally, adjust the CPU Core, CPU SA, and CPU IO voltage to respectively 1.35V, 1.3V, and 1.2V. Save the settings and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. Again, we are seeing the majority of the gains in the multi-threaded applications, but also our game benchmark, Final Fantasy XIV, has a very nice plus 14% performance increase. Again, checking with Prime95 with AVX enabled, we are seeing peak CPU temperatures of 94 degrees centigrade and peak VRM temperature of 74 degrees centigrade, with an average CPU package power of 272 watts. Now, let's move on to the manual overclocking. Keeping it simple, let's enter the BIOS again and switch to Advanced Mode. Then, enter the OST menu. Under CPU Ratio Apply Mode, select Turbo Ratio. Change the Turbo Ratio for 1 core to 8 core as follows. 53, 53, 51, 51, 51, 50, 50, 50. Adjust the CPU Ratio Offset when running AVX to 0. Set the Ring Ratio to 46. Enable the Extreme Memory Profile. In the Digital Power submenu, adjust the CPU Load Line Calibration Control to Mode 4. Then finally, adjust the CPU Core, CPU SA, and CPU IO voltages to 1.35, 1.3, and 1.2 volt respectively. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. Again, we're seeing very healthy performance gains all across the board, ranging from about 5% in single-threaded applications up to 33% in white cruncher Pi 1 million digits. Looking at the temperatures checking with Prime95 with AVX enabled, we're seeing peak CPU temperatures of 95 degrees centigrade and peak VRM temperatures of 75.5 degrees centigrade, with an average CPU package power of 277 watts. To end this video with, I want to talk about two different things. First, what's the right overclocking strategy? Well, if you're going to be buying this motherboard, I assume that you will be running custom loop water cooling. In that case, your thermal solution is already quite good, meaning that you will not be bottlenecked by the V-Core very early on. My advice would be for you to go into the BIOS and set the V-Core to 1.3 or 1.35 volts, and then use the turbo ratio offset to sort of get an initial feeling of how high your CPU can go. Once you see an instability, drop down one ratio and then play around with the V-Core to either get more frequency or better stability or better temperatures. Secondly, uh, unlike the Core i9 that we looked at in the previous episode, the performance gains from the Core i7 overclocking is actually quite good. You can get an easy 15% performance boost in probably within an hour or something like that. That's not bad at all. Anyway. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you liked the video, you know what to do. And till the next time.